How come I don't hear anything? Well, good evening. Hi, everybody. Uh, we'll start just here in a minute. I'm kind of getting everybody admitted and uh, getting everything set up. So I have everybody muted um, with with online meetings. It, it just makes it a lot easier. But you can unmute yourself. Uh, we'll we'll open up at the end for questions and stuff like that. Um, there should be a little icon on your page there somewhere that has like a red microphone. You can click that or unclick it. I think you can also use your space bar on a computer. But um, so that's why it's so quiet. I think almost everybody has been admitted. Let me check. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, I know a few people might join us later. Uh, I'm also recording this uh, meeting, and for anybody that misses it, uh, I'll post it up in case uh, they're not able to attend or couldn't figure out the Zoom thing. So anyway, my name is Mr. Brott. If I had met you before, and I'm the head band director at Kempner High School, and uh, we have several directors. Mr. Uh, Duaneus is my assistant director. Um, he might be joining us here in a bit. Uh, Mr. Guillem is our color guard director. I, I think he's in the meeting. And uh, our percussion director is Mr. Perales. Uh, so I'm Mr. Brott. And uh, the purpose of this meeting is to kind of help you get through. Normally, we have a registration, an on site registration, uh, where we have parents and students come up uh, at the end of May. And we, we collect information, we collect registration forms. Uh, we do a lot of that kind of stuff, uh, payments, we collect payments. So the main purpose of this meeting is to kind of do, uh, since we haven't been able to do any of that in person, it's just kind of guide you through all the things that you need to take care of at this point um, and to help you with it if you've had any issues with it um, and kind of answer questions about that. So I'm going to go through several pieces of information and show you some, uh, a couple of uh, different things on our website. Um, if you have questions, if you'll, uh, type them in the chat. Uh, that'll be the, the most uh, concise way for me to get to them uh, with this many people asking questions aloud can get kind of hectic. Uh, if you're not able to figure out how to do that on the chat, at the end, I'll let you, um, you can unmute your mics and you can ask your questions at the time. But just as I'm going through this stuff at any point in time, if you'll type, type your questions in the chat, uh, I'll answer all of them, if not at that time, by the end of the meeting. So. 
Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and run through a lot of this information. I'm going to show you a screen here that I'm going to share with you. All right, hopefully if it worked correctly, you should be seeing our, our website right now. Um, so the band website is kempnerband.net. Uh, you can see that kind of at the top of the screen, hopefully, but once again, it's kempnerband.net and there's a lot of really good information. Uh, before I show you a whole bunch on the website, let me just review a couple of things here. Uh, so for this meeting, uh, like I said, if you'll stay on mute, until the end, if you, if you have questions at the end, I can answer them at that time. Um, and then type your questions in the chat. Uh, it also helps if you're running this on a computer, if you'll close unneeded applications on your computer, it helps the video and everything with this kind of run a little bit better. And then once again, I am uh, recording this meeting and I'll post it on YouTube for anybody that uh, missed it. Let me just check the waiting room real quick and admit, got a few people here. All right, moving on. So we have our band website, kempnerband.net. Um, on that website, the first thing I wanna point out is our calendar. So you can click calendar at the top of our website. And so right now you see June and you see band parent meeting, which is what we're doing right now. Um, but, but what I really want you to do is to skip ahead and to look at the end of July and the beginning of August, because that's kind of when we get started with everything again. Um, so if you'll see on the, on the calendar uh, for July, July 20th, we start with a color guard camp and a, and a percussion camp, a drum camp. So if your student or if your child is in the color guard or is, or is a percussionist or a drummer, um, we would like them to attend those camps. Um, and that's July 20th through the 23rd, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can see all that on our calendar there. And then July 24th, I think the time is a little bit different, but you can see that uh, there on the calendar. Um, then the next week on July 27th, the 27th and the 28th, those dates are for freshmen. So if your student, if your child is a freshman or, an, or really just a, a new student to the band program, um, we have camp on those dates at Kempner High School from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. on July 27th and 28th. And then July 29th, we start with full band camp with all band students. And you can see there, July 29th, summer band, all band students, eight to five. Uh, so pretty much everything kind of starts up at the end of July. And uh, there's a few weeks of band camp there. The schedule kind of changes from week to week. Um, all of this is on our calendar. Like you can see, uh, if you'll just look through there and see everything. And then the first day of school is July 12th. Uh, so we, we have s summer night rehearsals all that week, and then at the end of the week, uh, on, on that Friday, July, on August 14th, we're going to have a concert uh, where we sort of preview the marching show. Um, and then, kind of on the 17th of August, we sort of fall into our, our normal uh, kind of marching band schedule, which is usually three rehearsals per week. I know that's a question that a lot of parents and a lot of students have is what is the schedule like during marching season? Um, and it, it changes week to week, so you really just gotta go through the calendar. But most weeks are three rehearsals. Uh, those rehearsals are four to 6.30, and then usually a game on Friday or sometimes Saturday. So you can see that first week of school is kind of different, but starting on the 17th, we don't have a game that week, so we just have three rehearsals. The next week, there's three rehearsals, and then the game is on the 29th of August on a Saturday. Uh, the next week, there's three rehearsals, and the game is on Friday. Um, and then that goes through the beginning of November and then and the end of football season. So every rehearsal, every football game, every marching contest uh, is on our calendar already. So please check it out. Check your schedules. The thing that I really want you to most be focused on really is our band camp dates at the end of July and the beginning of August, uh, because those dates are required. Uh, for Kempner Band students, and what will happen is students who fail to show up or if they don't make it or, or they can't be there, they won't end up getting a spot in our marching show. Uh, we learn the drill, we learn the music, all the things for the marching show all, all during that time, and if kids miss it, by the time they come in, it puts them really, really far behind, and, 
and then they're just playing catch up kind of the rest of the year. So it's real important that students uh, uh, attend those dates. Uh, if things do come up, just email us. I know, you know, sometimes there's unforeseen uh, circumstances or unforeseen, uh, you know, things that, that go on that you might have to miss a day here or whatever, but just email us and make sure we know uh, well beforehand so we can kind of deal with that as we go or be prepared for it. Uh, so that's our calendar on the website. Um, like I said, I put everything on there and I usually I have everything up there about six months beforehand. So um, usually things don't throw us off guard unless, you know, our administrators ask us about, you know, something last minute, but everything is usually put on there way, way, way beforehand so you can plan and uh, kind of prepare and, and wrap your calendar around our calendar. So uh, it's on our website. Just click the top calendar uh, and you'll see it on there. All right, so moving on. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is uh, is our remind communication. So this is our text. So on our website, and I have all this information on here, one of the tabs at the top says remind text communication. So you can click on that and see um, all of the different remind classes that, that you might need to join. Uh, parents have a special code, and you can see there that's the at 20 KHSP. Uh, there was an email that was sent out, uh, or one of the emails that was sent out, I think had the wrong code. So you might have joined some kind of uh, art class or, or it was a photography class. So that's not it. That's not the right one. Uh, the correct parent code is at 20 KHSP. Um, and then they, the band students need to join uh, one of these codes, depending on if they're uh, what band they're in or if they're percussion or color guard. So you, you should be able to see all that. Uh, the Remind Tech service, by the way, is a way that we communicate with parents and students. And this is probably the primary form of communication that we use. Um, and it really, really helps to be signed up for this. If you're not signed up, if you're not getting these texts, you're gonna miss a lot of information. Um, what, for instance, one of the things that we do, like when we're coming back from a trip or when we're coming back from a band trip or a football game, is we will um, text out, hey, ETA, we're, we're gonna, we should arrive by 9 p.m. And then that kind of helps you so you're not up there waiting or, or you don't get up there late. Um, so anyways, the text remind thing, it, it's really super important. And the way you get on there, uh, I know some people have had a little bit of tr uh, trouble with this, but you put the number, so you go to your texting app and uh, you put in the number, which is 81010810. That's like the phone number you're gonna text. And then you put this message uh, below to join each group. So if I was gonna join the parent group, I'd go to my text, I'd put the number 81010, and in the message, uh, I would type at 20 KHSB. And I push send, and you should get some kind of confirmation uh, message. If that for some reason doesn't work, there's some other ways. I might be able to add you directly, but you can just email me um, or you can call my office phone and, and I can kind of walk you through that or give you some separate instructions. I know sometimes uh, different services um, have a little more trouble with that than others. So anyways, all that is on our website, the Remind Text Communication. Um, I emailed it out, I put it on our Facebook page. Uh, hopefully you've, you've seen that by now. Um, so the next thing is uh, registration forms. Um, you've probably seen this and probably seen it multiple times, but that's the forms that, that we asked you to fill out and return, and that was due today. And I, I've gotten most of our students al already. We're just waiting on a couple others. Um, the registration forms is also on our website. If you go to the home page on the website, I'm clicking home. Hopefully you guys can all see this. Um, on the news feed here, there's a, there's a button that says registration forms. So click on that. There's a PDF. If, you, if I clicked on registration forms here, there's a PDF with three forms. You can electronically fill those out and save them and just email them to me. That would be probably the best, easiest thing to do. I know some of y'all printed them out and, take, and took pictures of them and then uploaded the pictures. That works too, you know, any, any way you can kind of make that work for you uh, and just email it to me uh, is fine. My email is listed here. It's paul.brot at fortbendisd.com. Um, and all students need to fill out these forms. Percussion, color guard, 
uh, woodwinds, brass, returning students, uh, brand new students, every single band student needs to fill out these forms. Uh, we, we fill these forms out every single year. Uh, we have to update them yearly. So even if the students fill them out last year, they got to do it again. So anyways, this is on our website. If you click on registration forms, this little yellow button down here, I'll click it. And you'll see it should works. Yeah, should open up the forms. There's three of them there. Just fill them out, save it, and email it back to me. All right, moving on. All right, band fees. Um, back to the home page on our website. And there's uh, down here in the news 2021 band uh, this band placements 2021 band fees. If I click on that. I know I've sent out several emails and texts and a lot of stuff about this, so I apologize if this is all information you've already heard, you know, five different times, but I uh, just want to make sure everybody sees it. So uh, I'm going to kind of go through this uh, as, thir as thoroughly as I can. I know some of you might have questions. Type them in the chat, um, and if you still have questions at the end when I'm finished, you can, you can unmute and ask them at that time. So band fees. Um, every single student is in the march. All students, woodwind, brass, color guard, percussion are part of the marching band. Um, that's another thing is the marching. I, I know most of you already know this, but being in the marching band is not optional. So all band students uh, participate in the marching band. So anyways, there's a, a $300 marching band fee. That fee um, covers a whole multitude of items. Um, and some of them are listed here. The member fees for marching band include marching and concert uniform uh, use and maintenance fees, marching gloves. We wear marching gloves with the marching uniform. Music, it pays for music uh, that we have. Most of the music that we use for marching band is written for the marching band. Uh, we have a composer who is hired and paid to write music specifically for our marching band, not just our show music, but even some of our stand tune. This fee helps pays for that. Uh, we have designers uh, that design all the choreography on the field and the, the marching forms and all the different things that we do on the field is paid through these fees, the design of it. Uh, props, which get really expensive, is helped uh, paid through these fees. Uh, some of our travel costs, our contest entry fees, and much, much more, lots of stuff that is paid through this. Um, all, like I said, all band students pay this, and we've set up a payment plan. And that first payment of $100 uh, was due today, June 1st. And then the second payment is the beginning of August, another $100. And then the final payment is due on September 1st. So you can pay it all now if you want, if it's easier, or you can use this payment plan, uh, kind of whatever works best uh, for you it is fine with us. But then all band fees, all marching band fees are due by September 1st. So, um, and then the other thing about these band fees, I know this happens with a couple kids, is uh, these fees become non-refundable after, um, I believe it is September 1st is the non-refund date. Um, yeah, that's right. There will be no refunds, partial or full, issued after September 1st. Um, so by that time, and the reason for that is, is by that time, by September 1st, we've already spent uh, the majority of that money. Uh, like I said, this, I mean, we've already spent some of it now with the, the show design, and we're already ordering props and that kind of thing. Um, so that's the reason for that policy. Some of the other fees that you might have questions about is our Color Guard members. Uh, we buy them, well, they buy them themselves with their, with their Color Guard uniform fee, but Color Guard uh, members need to purchase a fall uniform for the marching show, which is $100. That's an additional fee that they pay, and that purchases, uh, they have a specific custom uniform that is made just for them. And they do get to keep that uniform at the end of the season, so it's theirs, they pay for it, it's theirs, but that is an additional fee for Color Guard members. They will also buy a separate uniform for the winner for their winter guard uh, performance, which is another $100. Uh, that first color guard uh, uniform fee is due today as well, June 1st, and then their winter guard uniform is due on December 1st. Uh, and then our percussionist part and some of our other students, some of our symbol students and um, 
oboe players and bassoon players and some other kids, they, per, they uh, participate in what we call the indoor drum line, and they have a custom uniform for that. Um, and that is due, that's $100 for that indoor drum line uniform, which is due on December 1st. So that's a long ways away, but we put it on here just so you can kind of plan this out um, and be ready for it so we don't surprise anybody with, with those kind of things. Um, and those fees are only for students in those uh, groups. So if you're not color guard, if you're not percussion, uh, you don't really have to worry about any of that uh, additional stuff. Some other fees that we also uh, have available for you, we have a game day meal plan, which is $60. That is completely optional. Uh, what that is, is at every football game, the way our schedule works, the students get out of school at 2.45 or 2.30, and we basically go straight into rehearsal at 2.35 or 2.40. We go straight to rehearsal, then uh, we do what we call, um, we do eat pack load time, where they're loading the trailer, um, and then we give them some time to eat. But they, they're not allowed to, to leave campus when they eat. And they're not really allowed to, uh, they don't really have time to leave. So most, a lot of students bring a sack lunch. Uh, some students you know, have parents drop food off. But a lot of our, probably the majority of our kids will buy this uh, meal plan. And that $60 meal plan uh, provides meals at nine football games. So when we have those football games, what will happen is, and there'll be more information coming out about this at the beginning of August at our parent meeting. Uh, we'll tell you specifically what meals you're getting at each at each football game, and uh, it's good stuff. It's like Chick Fil A, uh, pizza. Uh, I think they do uh, sub sandwiches for several games, some canes, um, and we'll send out in August on our parent meeting in August. We'll give you a schedule of what meals are for every single football game. So you'll know exactly what, what you're getting. So if you see, if you look at it and go, oh, I don't know, I don't really like Chick-fil-A and all that, uh, maybe you wanna just you know, bring a sack lunch or whatever. Um, so that's what the $60 meal plan is. That's optional, like I said. Um, then there's also a region band fee at the kids audition for region band in December. That's a $20 fee. And then our double read students, bassoon and oboe read students, uh, bassoon and elbow students, they can purchase uh, reads from us that are custom made, and those are $20. Um, so that's sort of uh, kind of, of a synopsis of what all the fees are, what they're for. The way to pay is also on the same page. And we've set up uh, three different ways to pay. Zelle, and there's instructions here how to pay through Zelle. A lot of you already know what that is. Um, you can make payments through PayPal. And there's a link here that'll take you to the Kepner uh, PayPal page. And then a, a lot of you have been using the Venmo. And there's a link here. If you'll click on that, it'll take you uh, to the Kepner Venmo page. And you can make your payments through there. Just make sure on all of these, whatever payment, uh, whatever, whatever form of payment that you use, that you uh, put your information on there. There's, there usually should be some kind of memo and you need to put the student name. Sometimes we'll receive payments, but we don't know what student it's for. And then it, get, it takes a long time to track down um, that, that fee and, and apply it to the right student. So um, the other thing is you can, um, I, I know there's a lot of questions about these fees and how the, all this works and, and, and that. We have a, a treasurer uh, who's really, really great. And she set up most of this. Uh, you can email her. If you'll go to our band booster page, which is also on our website, so I'm gonna click booster here, 2021 uh, booster officers, and this is it loads here. Try it again. There it goes. So if you scroll down, the treasurer, her name is Jennifer Guzman, and she's been our treasurer for this past year, and is our treasurer for next year. Uh, she's she uh, can answer a lot of your questions about if you have trouble with Venmo or logging in or a memo or something like that. Um, it just send her, if you click on this, it'll, it'll pop up her email and you can send her an email. I'll try to, it, I know some of y'all sent me questions. I'll try to answer as much as I can. Uh, and I, but I don't know the ins and outs like uh, she does. So if you have some more specific questions about that, she can definitely answer it. So that, that's kind of the summary of the band fees. Um, I know this is always a big concern. And it, 
and I know that's a lot of money. And trust me, I kids who are in band too. My my son is in band and plays saxophone. I I know exactly you know that how this works. You're paying for an instrument, and now you have to pay for fees. Um, but let me t I I can honestly tell you, we try very 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 hard and work diligently to keep these fees as minimum as possible. Uh, the other thing that we really do is we make this money go really really far. Um, the type of productions that we put on and the type of band experience we put on, um, other band programs in our area charge two, three, four, in some cases five times the amount of money uh, and, and are really doing some of the same stuff that, that we are doing. So um, if you look around at some of the other band uh, programs in the area, you'll see that our, our fees are actually much lower than most of the other competitive bands in our area. And uh, if you have questions or concerns about it, or you know things come up, you know maybe you're waiting on you know a check to come in or something, just let us know, man. We're very flexible with all this, and and we we can you know work work out a plan or whatever that works best for you. So uh, please don't be scared of it, and don't ever let this be a, an issue uh, for your kid participating in our group because you know we'll we'll do whatever you know it takes to make this. Uh, work for these students so they have a really great experience in the band. Um, like I said, if you have questions about any of that stuff, type that in the chat and I'll answer more about uh, these at the end if you still have questions. But I'm going to go ahead and move on. Um, so one, uh, one other thing that I kind of wanted to talk about uh, that's not on our website is just some expectations for the summer for your kids. Um, your kids, just like mine, haven't gone to school in several months, and some of them haven't been in a band or played their instrument in a long time. And I, I just want to kind of emphasize the importance of your student practicing. And we'll send out a lot. I've sent out already our uh, marching show music, and we're going to send out a lot of the, the stand tune stuff and, you know, some other kind of scales and stuff like that for, for kids to be working on. But it is absolutely a high priority that our students, when they show up in July, that we're ready to hit the road running. And if kids have spent, you know, two or three months not playing their instruments, that's going to put us so far behind, we will not be able to be competitive. Um, so just, you know, I, I know how it is, man. I, I have to remind my son every night, you know, have you practiced your saxophone tonight? You know, when's the last time you got it out? Um, if you'll just help us with that, it makes a world of difference. The bands that are the most competitive and the most successful in high school in the state of Texas are the bands that are full of kids who practice their instruments individually. Uh, there's a lot of other variables, but that one above everything else makes a bigger difference than anything. Props, uniforms, none of that stuff really matters if the kids aren't playing their instruments at a really high level. So anyways, I, I, I know it can, you know, it, you have to do it a lot and, and we appreciate it. And I certainly, our kids in the Kentner Band program are really skilled and equipped to do great things, but you know, just make sure they're, they're, we'll send out a lot of music and stuff for them to be working on. So, you know, they have something to, to, to do and work on. Um, and if you'll just help us in that way, it makes a, a lot of difference for us. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention, um, which was kind of new for last year, and there's also, um, there's been some adjustments made to this requirement for this year, is physicals. Last year, Kempner Band students had to get a physical in order to participate with marching band. Uh, UIL has uh, made a policy for this year. The only students that need a physical for the 2021 year, a new physical, are new marching band members. So if your student is a senior or junior or sophomore that was in the Kempner Band last year and they had a physical last year, then they're good, they're set, they're ready to go. No, no new you know, requirements needed. However, if your student or your child is a freshman, an incoming freshman, it's gonna be a ninth grader next year, and they've never been in the Kempner Marching Band before, they will have to get a, a new physical for the 2021 year. And that's not due, they, they, you have all summer to take care of that. And one of our band parents, um, is worked with us before who owns uh, a practice 
uh, we'll, we're going to set something up in July that they, will make it really easy for them to get their physical at a really, really uh, low cost. We did this last year and it worked out really great. I think we did it for like $20 a student. Um, and so also, as soon as that's set up, we'll set up some information about that. Uh, or you're more than welcome, you know, to use your own physician or whatever. Um, and it's just a regular UIL physical. I'll send some info about that. But pretty much every doctor in the state knows you. if you say, hey, my kid needs a UIL physical, they'll know exactly what uh, you're talking about. They should already have all those forms on file. But we'll send them out as well. But once again, those physicals, that's an only a requirement for new band students, for students that have moved in and, you know, maybe they came from a different school and that sort of thing. Um, all right, so I know I talked really fast. I went through a lot of different information, but that's really my big point. So let me check the chat here and see what questions you guys have put in here. Um, let's see. Yes, all students are automatically a part of the marching band. Um, I think I saw somebody by attending, admitting attendees. I, I think I got to everybody. But like I said, if somebody missed this meeting, I'll post it up. I'm going to send it out as soon as we're done on YouTube. I recorded this, and uh, they can go back and watch it if they missed it. Um, oh, yes. Uh, our uh, Miss Rapjan, who was our volunteer um, vice president last year of volunteers, um, she typed a message about background checks, and I can send out some more information about that. But um, you're going to see a whole lot of opportunities to volunteer um, and chaperone. We, we use chaperones for every uh, field trip and every game and every contest. Uh, we have parents come up and help uh, distribute food. We have parents that help with a uh, pit crew and loading our truck and our trailer and moving equipment. Um, and all of our volunteers uh, must submit a Fort Bend ISD background check. So there, I'll send out a link. And I, I think it's already on our webpage on there somewhere. If you go through, there's a volunteer button on our webpage. And if you click on that, there should be something on there um, about at the background check. So I might need to update that. It might be the old one. Uh, but, and that's returning parents uh, and, and volunteers will have to resubmit one for the 2021 year. So if you did it last year and you volunteered at everything, you, you have to do it every single year. So you have to do it again. Uh, thank you, Nicole, for, for bringing that up. That's a really good point. Um, all right, somebody had a question about a possibility of a schedule change. And I, I, this is, you know, the big reality that we've dealt with for the past few months has created a lot of questions about next year. And we are operating under the assumption that in August, everything is going to go kind of back to normal. Um, and there's a, a lot of reasons for that. Uh, the governor has already set in place motion for schools to open back up fully in the fall. UIL has already opened up uh, regulations for bands to have summer band. They've already opened it up. We're, we're already permitted to have summer band activities. Um, sports, athletics have already opened up and are starting their in-person uh, workouts and trainings. So every indication to us is that things are going to go back to normal or semi-normal in the fall. And so we're operating under that assumption. Um, now things might change in the next two months as they did the past few months. You know, we have no idea. We can't really foresee that. And in that case, we will, as soon as we get, you know, new information, as, as soon as new guidelines come down, uh, we will make uh, changes to the way we do things. It might affect our calendar might affect band camp um, and we'll send out communication about those things uh, as they happen but but there's been a lot of positive um, uh, news lately as far as opening things up and deregulating a lot of the uh, the things that are going on I know parents and like I said I have kids and um, there's a lot of concerns about all of that and please know that we're, we're working in conjunction with our administration with the Fort Bend ISD uh, administrators and superintendents with TEA guidelines, with UIL guidelines, and we're following everything that's being sent down to us. So um, like if anything new comes up, you know, we might have to make uh, adjustments to all this. But uh, like I said, I, I'm very hopeful that things are, are really gonna get at least back to kind of a, a semi-normal um, 
type of uh, band experience for us. And and let me say, I cannot tell. I don't think I've ever. I feel like you know, I I, I have I've been away with this from the students for so long, and we we it's been so long since we've had a concert or a performance. I am so eager to get going and get started with these kids, man. It's going to be the greatest marching band experience ever. Um, we we've worked day and night putting uh, our show design together and we've worked with some state-of-the-art uh, designers and music rangers and we're bringing in state-of-the-art uh, props and man the marching show is just going to be outstanding i sent out the music and students can download it now there's a link to that on our website that is password protected that password is uh, cougars not capitalized c-o-u-g-e-r-s um, and I, I'll send it out again with the password in case uh, you have any trouble with that. But it's it's really going to be a great year. Uh, the the other staff members and I, man, we love your students, and we we really enjoy getting to work with them. Working at Kentner High School is, is such a pleasure. The kids are are really great. It's a really great uh, group to be a part of, and it's really we treat it like a big family. And we want your kids to feel like it's a welcome place for them to be. It's a place where they can really grow and, you know, learn a lot of new skills. And we really put a lot of emphasis on character development and teaching the kids to be committed, to be uh, goal oriented, to be organized um, and really to lean on each other for Because really in a band over everything else and almost more than any other organization, we are successful as a, as a group. And we need every single member to be successful. And we really rely on each other for every, you know, every single person in the Kettner band plays a role in our success. So we really, we push that as much as we can. It's, it's very important to us and our students. And like I said, it's, it's a great group. If you're new to our organization, uh, please know that you're, you're getting into the premier organization at Kettner High School. So, um, and I, I say that with bias, but, but it's it's really is a great group, and I, I think the other parents and students will tell you that uh, their experience in the band program has been, you know, nothing but positive. And if there is any other, you know, kind of issues with anything, please bring it up because my, I feel like my number one job is to make your kid have a really great experience in our band program, whether they're the an all state player, best student ever on their instrument, or whether they're a beginner just learning how music. I want your student to love every minute of being in the Kempner Band. And, and I, I know Mr. Duaneus and Mr. Guillen and Mr. Prowls and I, we, we work day and night to make that happen for, them, for your kids. So uh, now I'll let that rant be over. Uh, there was another question about the, the new band hall. So if you haven't heard, um, we're getting a brand new band hall and fine arts facility, which is basically quadrupling the space that we had before. It's a state-of-the-art facility uh, with a, a 1,500-square-foot band hall, a, a secondary band hall, a percussion room, 12 practice rooms, offices, uh, storage space, equipment room. It's, it's a state-of-the-art facility. And construction has just started on all of that. Um, as of right now, I'm being told that completion of that will not happen probably until fall of 2021. So we're a full school year away from moving into that, which I know is, is frustrating and disappointing to, you know, if you're a senior, um, but it's, that's just, it, it is what it is. So we're in kind of a temporary space on campus and this year is gonna be, you know, we'll be going in and out of different spaces, but um, at the end of it, there's gonna be some really great things happening as far as our facilities that can be. Um, Okay, and there's a question about bass clarinet music. Yeah, I'll, I'll, if that's not up there, I'll, I'll, I'll add that up there now. We might have missed that. Um, and that's all the questions I see in the chat. Um, if you guys, I'm going to open it up now. If you have other questions and uh, you want to voice them now, you can um, uh, feel free to unmute your mic and, and fire away. And if you don't have questions, that, that's it for me. You're feel, feel free to leave whenever you like. Hi, Mr. Brott. Hey. It's Layla. Hey, Ms. Vendrell, how are you doing? We're okay. That was Layla. Oh, hi, Layla. Hi. 
Hey, Miss McKenna. Good to see you. Hi, Miss McKenna. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Everything has moved around because we've been getting new floors. Woo! Oh, yeah. Remodeling, right? Thank oh, you, everybody. Yeah. Um, that participated in this. I appreciate y'all being here and participating. But yeah, y'all, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of questions. But if you don't need to stay, you don't. You don't have to. All right. Mr. Brock. Yes. Yeah, I'm here. Hi, so I am Kobe's mom, Kobe Montenegro. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. So, um, so Kobe is, so Kobe will be there as a um, 10th grader. And I wanted to know, so which category does he fall into? When does he start the, in July? So does he got the, the uh, what is it, July the 27th or the 20th? Yeah, I would prefer because since he missed a year of band last year, yes, and this yes. is his first time doing marching band, I, I'd yes. like him to come to the freshman band camp, um, so, even though he's not a freshman. Just, right. And the purpose of that is because we do all new skills those two days, so he'll definitely want to be there for that because there's some some new things that he's going to need to learn and kind of work on uh, that he missed last year. So yeah, if, he'll, if he can come on the 27th, that will definitely put him in the best shape. So he'll, okay, so he'll start on the 27th. Correct. Yes. yes and then what do you recommend for him to start practicing from here to there? What can he do? Uh, he, he's a trumpet player, correct? Yes, trumpet. Um, buzzing would be the, the best. Uh, that's the most fundamental thing for a brass player. And yes. he should know some buzzing exercises and Okay. Mr. Duaneus, my assistant, is a trumpet player. I can have him get in contact with Kobe and send in some can other he? stuff. Okay. But yeah, yeah, buzzing and lip slurs would be the best thing. And then, you know, scales and stuff like that. But yeah, buzzing and lip slurs, just, just to kind of get his muscles and his mouth kind of back and going again. Okay. Okay. And then you have your, your um, one of the teachers uh, contact him. Yeah, Mr. Duaneus. Yeah. Duenas. And okay. his email is on our website. If you'll click on directors, uh, you'll see his email there if you if, if you want to uh, message him. Okay, I can do that. Yeah. I can do that. Okay, so we're okay, really so excited to have Kobe back. We but I'm I'm really glad he's coming back to band. I think he's really gonna enjoy it. He's he's excited. He's excited. So so I think he's gonna have fun. He's yeah, he's looking forward. So okay, so the twenty seven. On the yes. twenty seven, he'll start. Okay. Okay. Yes. Well, thank, thank you. you. It's good thank talking you. to you. Thank you. Same here. Hey, what's up, Angel? Hey, man. I was just gonna. I don't know if there's a bunch of people on, but I was gonna say something to the incoming freshman. If that'd be okay. Yeah, go for it. There's still hey, twenty so, or so people. All right, great. So, if any of you uh, parents out there are first-time band, um, uh, marching band parents, I want you to know that the schedule looks a little daunting. It looks like we practice a lot and play a lot, but I got to tell you, it's a lot of fun. So uh, my, my son, Dylan, went through four years of marching band, and this is my daughter, Emily's second year. And so uh, we're all in. They love it. Dylan loved it from day one. He started off as a freshman uh, trying to do football and band, quickly realized how much fun band was and how much he loved it, and was all in on band and ended his senior year as the clarinet section leader. And uh, I, I just want to tell you, it can be done. Both of our kids are uh, doing very well academically. They're, they get great grades. And I think that has a lot to do with the uh, discipline that they learn from just being in band and being part of the whole program. So it's a great time. The kids uh, make a lot of friends. They get to make friends with sophomores, juniors, and seniors. And th those relationships um, last. So my son had one of his best friends that he met when he was a, a freshman was a senior. And they're still friends to this day. So um, it, it's, it's a great experience. Your kids are going to have a great time. Um, give it a chance. Uh, let, them, let them try. Let them practice. Uh, it's it's going to be really hard at first, but they're going to get used to it, and they're going to love it. Trust me, they're going to love it. So that's it. Thanks. I appreciate you saying that, Angel. 
the other thing I forgot to mention uh, I should have talked about was uh, students in sports and other activities and you know that we were we have kids in every activity and every sport uh, at the school that are in the band so Well, thank you everybody for being here. I appreciate it. If y'all have any other questions or anything, just feel free to email me or text me anytime. Have a good night.